CGI is a wonderful tool in the right hands and can be employed to create fantastical worlds and creatures, or even everyday objects or landscapes in some cases. However, if the digital wizardry does not quite sing, then viewers will be subjected to ghastly images that break any sense of immersion into the story. And bad CGI stands out even more in films where the visual effects are otherwise stunning as you're about to unfortunately see. It might be a fleeting moment of wonky green screen use or instance of the uncanny valley, but these moments stick to people's minds and end up undermining the visual splendor surrounding it. So I am Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 10 more stunning movies with one awful CGI moment. Number 10, The Car Chase, Barbie. This entry is unique in that it does not instantly appear to be awful, but upon further scrutiny it is a rather unsightly image, which falls flat in the otherwise vibrant and colourful Barbie. Greta Gerwig's 2023 box office triumph boasts imaginative production design and costuming, and the visual effects used to extend the pre-existing sets are usually top-notch. However, the car chase that ensues once Gloria and Sasha break Barbie out of Mattel's headquarters lacks any kinetic flair behind it, and it's shot like a run-of-the-mill car commercial. The main vehicle in the set piece, the Chevrolet Blazer SSEV, especially sticks out due to its janky movements and unusual shade of blue, whose rendering and lighting does not match the black SUVs next to it. As mentioned before, it doesn't immediately stand out, but in an era where fans pore over films for virtually every possible detail, it just fails to hold up compared to the rest of the movie. Number 9, Adam Warlock's Flight Through Counter-Earth, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The MCU is well known for its reliance on visual effects, to a fault in many cases, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is no different. Fortunately, James Gunn's franchise Farewell is a fantastically realized world, with near impeccable effects work on both the practical and digital fronts. However, one moment fails to match the rest of the trilogy capper's visual splendor, and it involves Adam Warlock's desperate flight through Counter-Earth to save Aisha from impending doom. The Sovereign creation's flight through the exploding planet is undeniably energetic and conveys his astonishing speed, but is let down by its odd camera placement and almost wobbly movement. This brings a lot of attention to the VFX being used to create the sequence, and not in a good way. One can feel that Gunn and his creative team were going for a frenzied and immersive depiction of Warlock's flight, but it did not quite soar as expected. Hopefully, the director will have more success depicting the ability of flight in 2025 Superman Legacy. What do you think is the best superhero flight scene in movie history, folks? You let me know in the comment section right down below. Number 8, the T-800s reveal Terminator Salvation. Say what you will about Terminator Salvation's story and character work, or any Terminator film post-Judgment Day, but the 2009 reboot slash sequel had pretty solid visual effects. McGee's much maligned follow-up features a variety of well-forged killing machines, and the attempts to integrate them with more tactile practical creations are admirable. All this said, what was clearly intended to be the film's standout VFX shot ended up being a terrible misfire. While Marcus and John Connor rescue Carl Reese and Star from a Skynet facility, they are ambushed by a T-800, in this case Roland Kickinger, with Arnold Schwarzenegger's likeness. Creating digital humans, whether fully or partial, will always be a challenge, and Terminator Salvation unfortunately did not succeed in this regard. The T-800's visage did not overcome the pitfalls of the uncanny valley, and what it did instead was put off fans, and remind them that digitally rendered humans are still some ways off before they can be considered realistic. They had a go, though. Number 7, Ilsa Rescues Ethan, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. The Mission Impossible franchise has always boasted reliably well-crafted visuals. They are, for the most part, sleek and well-directed blockbusters, whose blend of practical stunt work with digital touch-ups makes for a winning formula. However, this particular combination did not quite work out as hoped in Christopher McQuarrie's franchise debut, specifically Ethan Hunt's infiltration of an underwater vault in Casablanca. The sequence is expectedly nail-biting and the VFX 
tactics used to flesh out the vault's security features are sound enough, but once Ilsa Faust has to rescue a drowning hunt, everything nearly falls apart. The ragdoll physics used to showcase Ilsa grabbing an unconscious Ethan are distractingly inauthentic, and almost detract from the intense events at play. The use of VFX in this instance was understandable, as performing the stunt in raging waters would have been way too dangerous, even for Tom Cruise. But that brief moment is still unsettling in an otherwise excellent actioner. Number 6. Forrest Meets the President's Forrest Gump 1994 was a really good year for cinema, as medium gems such as The Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction, and Leon the Professional wowed audiences nearly three decades ago. And alongside those gems exists Robert Zemeckis' adaptation of the 1986 Winston Groom novel, which was a critical success, box office hit, and pop culture mainstay. For its time, Forrest Gump is a delight for the eyes, as it pioneered multiple advancements in filmmaking techniques such as rotoscoping, compositing, and image warping. These techniques were employed most notably during the titular character's iconic meetings with various historical figures. And while they are charming, they are certainly limited in their fidelity. Particularly notable is Gump's encounter with John F. Kennedy, which was designed to give the impression that Tom Hanks and the famed president were in the same shot talking to each other. The moment itself is fun enough, but is just let down by the fact that the technology used to realize it was still in its infancy. Cheers for tapping on this video today, folks! Hit that subscribe button down below for more What Culture videos on your screen. Number 5. Jabba the Hutt Redesigned The Star Wars Special Editions the technical advancements made as a result of the original Star Wars trilogy needs no introduction. Realizing a galaxy far, far away was a Herculean task, but George Lucas and his fellow filmmakers achieved it with aplomb. Regrettably, Lucas then felt the need to add unnecessary flourishes in subsequent releases of the trilogy, especially in the special edition. Whether it was extra stormtroopers at a checkpoint, or various alien species in different scenes, the digital editions feel woefully out of place in the feature. This is most notable in Jabba the Hutt's introduction. The fan-favorite antagonist was brought to life using practical means back in the day, but in the special edition he was replaced by a ghastly CG creation. This is especially jarring when he is put up against the very tangible likes of Han Solo and the practical production design. To make proceedings worse, the scene also features a rather awkwardly imposed Boba Fett in the mix, further highlighting the artifice of it all. In all fairness, Jabba was included because the original plans had intended for him to be in the scene, but technological and budgetary limitations stood in his way. And while seeing the Hut crime boss is always a welcome sight, in this context sometimes it does not hurt to leave things as they were. Number 4. Slim Down Mark Watney, The Martian Ridley Scott's 2015 big-budget adaptation of Andy Ware's brilliant book is impressive in its own right. The sci-fi epic captures the book's surprising but welcome warm tone and optimism, and its scientific accuracy sometimes hits the mark in a satisfying manner. The cinematography, visual effects, and production design employed to convey Mark Watney's isolation on Mars all come together to present a harsh, lonely, yet somehow stunning world far removed from our own. Own. Despite all this, though, there is one CGI-heavy moment that does not meet the high standards set by the rest of the film. As Mark gets ready for his rescue after a year and a half on the Red Planet, viewers are briefly shown the effect of his overextended stay on the nearby planet on his body. While not egregiously bad per se, crafting an emaciated Watney using CGI in a body double was the logical choice to do, but did not quite land as expected. This specific VFX work was admittedly better than in films such as the first MCU Captain America movie, but still does not succeed in appearing completely lifelike, which is a shame, isn't it? Number 3. The Rhinos Reveal The Amazing Spider-Man 2 for all its faults, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is an undeniably pretty picture. Fans on social media have amusingly remarked on how the 2014 superhero sequel is almost perfect for showcasing a state-of-the-art TV's visual clarity, and with good reason. The feature features dynamic camera work, vibrant lighting and coloring, and the VFX work really well, especially when it comes to depicting the titular hero's high-flying acrobatics. That said, the villains are a bit of a mixed bag. Electro's bio 
electric heavy appearance is sometimes passable and sometimes questionable, as is the makeup work on Dane DeHaan's Harry Osborn slash Green Goblin. However, none of their worst moments compare to the laughably bad effects work used to bring Paul Giamatti's Rhino to life. In the film's closing sequence, a rejuvenated Spider-Man confronts the mecha suit armed villain, but before doing so, the two exchange a few barbs. None of these one-liners elicit the same kind of emotions that the Rhino's atrocious design did, as viewers are subjected or treated, depending on your sense of humor, to the sight of Giamatti's head floating in the middle of a vulgar approximation of the character's design from the comics. Lovely stuff. Just look at that thing. Number 2. Legolas Mounting a Running Horse – Lord of the Rings – The Two Towers the craftsmanship in the Lord of the Rings trilogy is beyond impressive. From the production design, costuming, makeup slash prosthetics, and so much more, Peter Jackson's grand three-part adaptation of J.R.R. Tolkien's work is almost unrivaled in its top-tier filmmaking. The Two Towers is no different, baby. With the Battle of Helm's Deep in particular standing out as an example of a brilliant showcase of movie magic. Unfortunately, though, one moment in the 2002 feature highlights its aging visual effects work. The moment in question comes after the master archer Legolas has spent some time scouting ahead for incoming Urukai, and is in turn followed by the Rohirrim as backup. Once his allies arrive, Legolas mounts his rival Gimli's steed in a rather unusual and almost inhuman manner. The elf's agility and dexterity are undeniably impressive in this otherwise visually spectacular epic, but this jankily rendered action beat almost took away from this. To be fair, the scene was meant to be a practical stunt, but Orlando Bloom injured his ribs before the moment could be filmed, and the filmmaking team was forced to use digital means as a result. And now we have this wonderful visual, there it is. Number 1. The Transformation Sequences – Transformers Age of Extinction Depending on who you ask, Michael Bay's Transformers films are an affront to the medium of cinema, or overblown, revolting, and yet somehow entertaining blockbuster fare. Those in the latter camp would point towards the admittedly stunning blend of digital and practical effects work in each feature, and 2014's Transformers Age of Extinction is no different. The billion-dollar grossing sequel boasts remarkable effects work, as the titular automatons seamlessly fit into the frame with its live-action components, and their transformation sequences are expectedly impeccable. The same, however, cannot be said for Joshua Joyce's lazily named Transformium, and the robots created from it. The engineered biomechanical beings look just as real as their celestial counterparts, but their transformation sequences feel lazy, and worse still, feel like cheap Photoshop effects compared to the intricate transformations seen in other films. It is entirely possible that the half-baked nature was the point of the film, but this could have definitely been achieved in another, more convincing manner. Whatever way you slice it, that CGI is not great. 